in third grade, I wrote middle school papers in HTML, and I did not, uh, I did not print the output. I printed the original code when I turned them in. Um, and the teachers did not appreciate that. Fun fact, though, I did a report on the death penalty, and I had a MIDI plane in the background of another one that bites the dust. So I was really proud of that in third grade. Um, yeah, I had a dark, dark sense of humor even back then. But <laughs> basically, I, I started doing websites, and I was looking for a CMS. And I started on PHP Nuke, and then I found this CMS called Mambo. And I was like, oh, this makes the job a little bit easier. And then Mambo went belly up um, right after I joined it, and then found Joomla. I'm like, this looks a lot like Mambo on the back end. I had no idea it was a fork of the project. I thought it was just something that looked exactly the same. I got involved in that, started volunteering, then got involved in WordPress, started you know, helping out um, speaking and other things, and my I fell in love with community. And with that, I was able to like, learn these tools really well. Um, when I was at an agency, I built hundreds of bank and credit union websites for um, inside of Joomla. I have built hundreds of hospital websites in WordPress. And I really just really love these platforms, and I've been able to help people kind of grow and help their businesses. Now my job is just talking to people and sharing kind of my expertise and seeing how our tools or you know our philosophies can help them grow their businesses. So who here does like freelancing a website full time? Like is their full time source of income? Okay, who here's like a part time gig making websites for other people? Okay, about half half. Okay, cool. Um, so how to make a hundred thousand dollars? Basically, you would need to sell a hundred thousand dollar product to one person, or you sell a fifty uh, fifty thousand dollar project to two people. Or you sell a $25,000 project to four people. Or sell a $10,000 project to 10, uh, 10 people. Um, I believe I did my math and he's right. Sell so a $5,000 project to 20 people. Or sell a $2,500 project to 40 people. Or sell a $1,000 project to 100 people. Or sell a $500 project to 200 people. It's just that easy. So, but you know, a lot of people are like, great. Literally, you're telling me I need to sell $500 to 200 people, and that's all I need to do. And at the end of the day, and I'm like, I talk to people, and I'm like, yeah, that is literally all you need to do. Because I find so many people overvalue their work. And when I say that, I don't mean that they overvalue their expertise, but... A lot of people that are that are especially new in the WordPress community that want to build websites for other people, and you know they might not even be a full developer. Maybe it's what I like to call an integrator. They know how to install plugins. They maybe know a little bit of CSS. They maybe make something look nice, but they're maybe not building something from scratch. But I talked to all these people like, oh yeah, I went out on my own. Okay, cool. What's your average client? Well, I did two jobs last year. I was like, okay, great. Yeah, one was for five thousand. One was for fifteen thousand. Okay, why is that all you did? Oh well, I talked to all these people that couldn't afford me. You know, I have a minimum $5,000, or I have a minimum $10,000, or I have a minimum $20,000 bid. And I'm like, okay, but you're not busy. And I hear this, I've heard this from hundreds and hundreds of people, is they think they're up here, but they're not keeping their pipeline full. So I talk to all these people, they say, oh great, how long does it take you to make a, get a project? Um, you know, it takes me about four months to really find one, quote one, and close one. And then I have to do the project. That keeps me busy for two months. And then another four months. So I'm like, OK, and how much are you getting for those projects? Oh, $10,000. And they're really proud of themselves that they sold a $10,000 project. But when you break it down, they're not making the money that they need for the effort. So I say reverse it. Um, I've talked to people that are doing this full time now. What if you sold a $500 website to 200 people? And I walked through how to do that um, on the later slides. Um, it's very, very easy to get people at this level. Now, the caveat is you have to make sure you're pricing your product accordingly with their expectations. You can't sell a 60-hour project at 500 bucks. That just doesn't make any sense. But you know how many people are just fine with something that would take you, honestly, two hours to do with some of the templates and themes and page builders that are out there? Honestly, at the end of the day, you need to get your portfolio full and you need to get where the money is. If you're wasting all your time trying to get to the $5,000, $20,000 projects and you're not keeping yourself busy, you know, $100,000 is very attainable. And I know that, you know, as though it's kind of funny you look at this, but it's, it really kind of makes it easy because 200 people, when you break it down, is not that much. One $500 project every business day is $130,000 a year. 
And yes, you know, you might not get that day one, but we kind of talk about some tools and ways that you can kind of do that. So um, with that, I am not saying that if you are able to sell a $10,000 project consistently, that you should not do that. You should definitely do that. And you can still quote that stuff. Because I usually find that people, when they start, they need to start low and they need to get portfolio stuff in. They need to get a lot of good, happy customers. And then when their knowledge and their um, portfolio goes up, maybe they start th charging 1000 or 1500 and it starts to scale accordingly. But at the end of the day, if you're not full with work, just, just get the work. And if you, know how, if you get your processes done right, it won't take you that long to be able to churn these things out correctly. And then at the end of the year, you'll have 200 customers you can refer people to. And then when you bid maybe the ten dollars or $50,000 project, you're not wasting 20 hours in meetings and discovery for something that doesn't get there. Put it this way, I got to the point when at the agencies we were in, and even when I was freelancing before I took this job, if somebody called me for a, a complex project, I would charge them discovery time. I would charge them $5,000 before I even gave them a bid on some of our, my higher projects I did when I was later because I had that value and I could justify it with my experience. But if you don't have that, just get the work. Money in the bank is better than hopes and dreams later on. And what's funny about this is when you have the work, the other issue that a lot of people have is they don't change their price. They, th they, under, they undercharge when they have a huge backlog of work. Every time I've raised my price when I've had a full backlog of work when I was trying to do this as more of a, like, a full-time thing before I got my, day, my dream job of being a community guy, every time I raised my price, I got more clients. But that was because I had the backlog of all of those projects, hundreds of projects behind me. So it's definitely a game. Um, there's a great video that I recommend on YouTube. It's called F You Pay Me, except it's not edited. It does have a lot of language, but it's by Mike Minazzotti. It's um, Creative Mornings. And it talks about contracts. And that's an important thing is make sure you have contracts. And at the end of the day, make sure you talk about communication. You know, start low, don't get an ego. That's what I always tell people because so many people honestly have an ego. And they feel like they're wasting their time and effort because they're giving out these projects for $500 or $1,000 or whatever it is. You know who doesn't have an ego? Wix.com, Squarespace, Weebly. They're perfectly happy to take the money. And guess what? They have a process that works for a lot of people. But you need to be clear. There's a great book by Nathan Ingram. He's from um, iThemes, and he does a lot of business consulting. And it's like dealing with problem clients. So his stuff is build, his book's called Building Fences Around Friendly Monsters, where uh, a client is just, it's a monster, but you need to build fences around it, such as expectations. So when your client emails you at 2 o'clock in the morning, if you respond, even though you happen to be up anyway, right away that sets that expectation at, oh, you're available at 2 o'clock in the morning instead of setting a reminder to have it auto-reply on the next business day. Right now, well, all my clients that um, I have currently, even though I've had them previously, they all know I am not 24-7 and I am not available um, when they need me. Any request they have has a minimum one-week turnaround because I'm on the road 180 days a year. And they're okay with that. Other people might not be okay with that, but I set those expectations clear. And you also need to set the expectations about what they're buying clearly. There are plenty of people that are perfectly happy with five-page websites at 100 bucks a page. There's a company out in Atlanta called One Week Website, and they charge between $100 to $400 per page, and a lot of people just buy two or three um, pages from them, and they actually were a big sponsor at WordCamp Atlanta a couple weeks ago. Um, in motion hosting has something called website quick starter where they'll build you a one page site within two business days for $99 flat and it's selling really well because there's a need for those types of clients and if you can sell higher please do but a lot of people are having trouble filling that pipeline and getting enough portfolio work to be able to move themselves up that ladder so when you sell a website make sure you're being clear on what they're buying you know, they're buy, you know if, they're, if you're selling a $500 project or a $1,000 project, say, hey, you're buying, you're, you know, I got, I got 30 templates you can pick from. And then you just say, um, you can pick a fine template and we'll edit this amount of content. You have to provide the content. And if you don't, but be very clear about what you're providing because this, if you're not very clear ahead of time, you're going to get sucked in changes 
and waste all your time and this plan won't make any sense because then you're spending 40 hours on a $500 project. You have to be extremely clear with these clients on what they're buying and a lot of people are okay with that. It's the same reason why Wix, Weebly, and Squarespace is taken away from WordPress market share of the, every single year. WordPress is growing over the overall CMS business, but Wix, Weebly, and Squarespace are selling these $40 a month plans that people are more than happy to buy. And there's nothing wrong with Wix, Weebly, and Squarespace. Those tools are actually pretty phenomenal from an end user perspective. They just wanted a website that's pretty and it got online and it does that. But you can help them provide that but have them own it because eventually those clients are going to be successful, hopefully, and they're going to need more than the limitations that those platforms provide. And then they're going to get sticker shock when they realize they can't do X, Y, or Z, and you have to rebuild a project from scratch, and then it's going to be five or fifteen thousand um, dollars. What's also nice about these small clients is you can nurture them um, as they grow. You can sell maintenance packages, you can sell updates, things like that. But there are three main ways that I recommend people get projects. BNI, referrals, and chambers of commerce. Anyone here been a member or are a member of BNI? Okay, did it, does it work for you or did it work for you? Cool, does anyone have a bad experience with a BNI group? No? Business Networking International. It is a lead exchange group that meets every week and there's only one person per category. So like one website designer, one insurance agent, one realtor, and you pass leads back and forth on a weekly basis. There are thousands of them across the world and there's probably like seven in Hamilton if I was gonna guess and I went to the BNI website because there's a lot in every city I've ever been to. The issue with BNI is they're so, they're basically big clicks of people talking, and if you don't fit in with that specific BNI group, that might not be the BNI group for you. I had to visit like seven BNI chapters before I found one where I felt comfortable with the other members. But what's cool about BNI is you can visit any chapter once for free. So go to BNI, visit a chapter, and when it's all about giving, that's what I like about BNI. It's all about giving out other information to people. You're not trying to get leads from people. You're trying to give leads to other people, but also have them know about you. So when I was in BNI, I did everything I could to give leads to everyone else as much as I could, and that was noticed. So they would try to do the same thing instead of just saying, "What what did I get this week?" I was like, "Oh, well, I met someone who needs." Um, wedding photography, and I know a photographer, and I'd give them that lead or whatever it is. But again, it's, you have to be very specific with the group and find the one that works for you. Also, BNI only works if you can commit to it. It's a, you have to go every single week. If you can't go, um, you have to have a substitute or you get kicked out of the group. Um, it's a very structured group, but it does work. I talk to a lot of people that don't like BNI because they're like, well, I went once and I didn't get any leads after like a couple months. BNI also, I found, takes about six months, depending on the cost of your service, to really get a lot of good leads. But the lower your price point, the more leads you'll get because people are more willing to take a risk on a, you know, passing a lead on a $500 project versus like a $50,000 project. Um, chambers of Commerce, anyone here part of their local Chamber of Commerce or Rotary or anything like that? Yeah. Um, anyone here um, that finds those networking groups are useful to them? Yes, okay. Anyone here that finds like those local chambers or networking things aren't useful to them? No? Okay, great. So chambers of commerce are very similar. I love chambers of commerce, but there are so many in every l region. Find one that works for you. Become a member and become active in those memberships. Is when I used to attend chambers of commerce, this is what I would do. Be like, oh, hey, my name's blah, blah, blah. What do you do? Um, and then they would tell me what they do, and then I would be like, and then I'm thinking in my mind, how can I sell them a website? How can I sell them a website? Oh, you're a plumber, great, do you have a, you know, and I would instantly go back to how can I sell them something? Instead of saying, how can I add value to you? And then a really good friend of mine, John Rampton, um, he's, he was rated by Time Magazine as one of the largest Twitter influencers. He has like two million followers. He writes for Time, Newsweek, um, ABC, all those major publications. He's like, demo, I give out as much, I, I help people as much as I can, and it, that's how I get all my business. And he's closed multi-billion dollar companies and all this stuff, and he's like, I've done the math. Every 10 people that I help will equal this much value in revenue. Every 100 people that I help will equal this much value in revenue, and every 1,000 people will equal a million dollars of revenue. Um, you know, those are his rough numbers. So that's how my philosophy is, is on web ventures, I'm uncommissioned. 
If someone wants to talk to me about how we can maybe help them from a fiscal perspective, I'm happy to talk to them. If it works out, great. If it doesn't, that's fine. If they just need a referral, like, oh, hey, let me refer you to someone at cPanel. I think your product would be really good at their confidence. I'm going to do that regardless because it's going to be good for the brand and good for me just by helping other people. And that's what I do in my evangelist job is just try to help people as much as I can and not try to sell our products because at the end of the day, that's going to take care of itself. If you have a decent product and, or service and you're just nice, you're generally helping people, people will remember that and pass your, pass your card and information around. And that's where Chambers of Commerce and B&I come in really handy. But for both of those, for me, it took six to 12 months of being really active of giving before I was able to reap those rewards back. But what's really nice about these is that B&I and Chambers of Commerce are so easy to sell $500 projects to. I know someone that was in a, a, gen, you know, a Toronto size metropolitan area and they joined their local uh, um, Chamber of Commerce at B&I and they're like, hey, we sell $500 websites, we'll have them in a week. And they, show some, they give like 20 examples of like five page sites that are basic templated sites and they get orders all day long. They literally do one site a week, uh, sorry, one site a day. They do one website a day. And they're just getting the orders because it's a good product that people are willing to pay for. Think the dry cleaners, the mom and pop pizza shops, these people that just want something basic. And they were going to go to Wix or Weebly because they, they saw the Super Bowl commercial, but then they're like, oh, I know this guy. Uh, 500 bucks, yeah, the websites look fine. Great, I'll, do, I'll go with you. And then you can focus on kicking them out. And if you have a process that's able to have a website that's done in under three hours, you're making pretty good money because your, work, your, your, your billable rate's a little, a little less than 150 an hour at that point. Uh, yeah, a little bit more than 150 an hour. And that's a pretty good billable rate and you're not spending a lot of time acquiring it. Plus then you can get the footer link on the referrals that say, hey, site built by ABC Designs, please click here. And you can also automate some of this process and have just order forms on the website. But you have to be clear on what you're buying if you're doing this low end stuff. Um, and if you're already able to consistently sell $1,000 projects and keep yourself busy, great. Keep doing that and then push for $1,500 and then push for $2,000. But if you're not able to consistently able to fill your funnel, start lower just to build the base. It's not saying you have to be there forever. And I've never once had a client get mad, be like, well, you changed your prices. Yep, I did. And if you want to keep working with me, this is what it's going to cost. In fact, I've had clients when at certain companies that, you know, we just didn't like working with and we would change the rates just for them. they will be like, you know what, it's just not, um, our, you know, our new rate's 200 bucks an hour. But it was 150 before. Yep, but for you it's 200. Well, I don't want to pay that. Well, that's fine. I can recommend someone. And more often than not, I've been surprised at people that have been like, well, I want to keep working with you. Well, that's what's going to cost to keep working with us. Because you're just building these small projects, you're interviewing clients, and you're not stuck in these long relationships. I can't tell you the amount of times I've taken larger projects because it was $5,000 and I was poor, and I was excited to get a $5,000 project that ended up sucking away three months of my life, and I hated every second of it because it was $5,000. But when I started when doing the low-end stuff, the clients were happy and it only takes 10 of them to equal the same $5,000 and I was happier at the same time. And then I, the secret weapon to all this is, sorry, that was a weird break. The secret weapon to all this is hosting. Who sells hosting for their clients? Okay, who lets their hosting, uh, their clients choose their own hosting? Okay, here's my biggest recommendation is I don't like selling hosting to clients directly because I find that gives you in a very weird support, support middle ground. Unless you're doing consistent work for that client, if you're just handing over a one-off site and then you do the hosting, first of all, I hate the annual billing letter of, oh, here's my invoice for the yearly hosting and then have to try to drag the money out of these clients. That's the bad part about low-end clients is they're not the best at paying their bills for renewals on the hosting. And I just hated dealing with all the billing on that. Plus they call you for every little question, um, even if it's not something that's inside your support. Now if you're selling maintenance as a service, like with maintenance plans, that's something you can add on. And then that's a different story. But if you're just selling the website and passing it off, let them get their own hosting. But get an affiliate account at a host you like or trust. I've never Nope, I've never once had a client not take the hosting I recommend across thousands of clients, ever. Um, and 
a standard shared hosting account where you get a 20% commission on shared hosting on a $75 annual hosting plan. For 200 sites a year, you get $3,000 in affiliate revenue your first year, $6,000 in affiliate revenue your second year, $9,000 in affiliate revenue your third year because it compounds because you get more clients each and every year. Now, this doesn't figure in attrition. You have to figure in probably a 5 to 10% attrition rate if you're looking at averages. But for basic numbers here, also you could go after a managed hosting plan. Like, um, I, I put most of I I used to put my clients on a fifty dollar a month plan that I got fifty percent commission on, and at scale it works out. I make a good part time income just on those hosting referrals for clients I haven't touched in years. Um, year four twelve thousand dollars. Year five fifteen. Year six eighteen. Year seven twenty one. Year eight twenty four. And the more you add, the more it compounds because everyone needs hosting. They don't know where to go. If you find a host that you trust and recommend that will work well with how you work with how your your workflow is, this is your secret weapon because ho clients don't care about affiliate links. You have to let a, uh, you should let them know that you get a little bit. So here's how I word it because some country like in the US you have to let them know if it's an affiliate link legally. I say hey I recommend XYZ host uh, like in motion hosting and I really recommend it for these five reasons and hey please use my link and just so you know I do um, you know my price can be so low on the building because this helps me subsidize some of that. It doesn't change your price at all. Most people are like sure but because they buy the hosting themselves you know what happens the host gets all the calls of this isn't working, or that isn't working, or my website's down, or my website was hacked. Your host gets to be the bad guy that says, yeah, you didn't update WordPress, and you got hacked, and that's your fault. You know, and it's so nice to just wash your hands of all of that mess. Now, if you're selling maintenance plans and you want to sell hosting, you definitely can, but I just, I find it wasn't worth the hassle at those lower end clients, and the higher end clients, I didn't want to take the risk. So I would recommend a host, and these are always hosts that I had good relationships with, so I could like call support and they knew who I was or whatever. But this is such a good way to um, get, you know, get some residual income that a lot of people don't ever um, think about. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to kind of talk about um, was community online. So there are so many ways you can get leads. So this is the link to our user group on BoldGrid. It's not just for BoldGrid users, it's free, it's for WordPress users. It is on the Book of Faces, so I apologize about that if you're not a Facebook person. But if you don't do Facebook, join the WordPress Slack. Also, go to Joomla meetups, go to Drupal meetups. Everyone's like, but I'm a WordPress person. Yes, you can make so much freaking money at a, at a WordPress, at, a, at another CMS's project because you'll meet these people that are die hard about Drupal and Joomla and they don't want to touch those projects and sometimes those clients just want a WordPress site and they don't want a Joomla or a Drupal site. Well, guess what? You can be that guy or that girl that they recommend and you can be the same and sometimes they change. When I started getting Joe, Joe Sonny here to WordPress events, he would never touch anything but Joomla. In fact, his name was Joe Joomla. And Joe, did you just rebrand? Yes. Yeah, and you're now doing WordPress stuff as well, right? That's right. See? And you can also bring people into the fold. Now he's a competitor, so we don't like him as much. But, <laughs> uh, but seriously, uh, just when you meet people and you help people, they'll give it back to you because sometimes people like the CMS of choice. And I don't care what CMS you use. Well, I'm not going to say WordPress is the best or the worst or anything because uh, tools are tools. Just don't be one. Um, that's literally my tagline because we, we, you can build the same site in five different ways. The, the workflow that works for you, I like WordPress. That's cool. That's amazing. Keep doing it. But there are people that don't. That's okay, but they will have people that need that WordPress expertise and you can be that person. Um, also go to other just you know startup events. Um, in Minnesota, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of events just for new businesses. Um, you know they get you know when they register in the state, you can get a list of who's a new business. Go to those cocktail hours through the chambers or other networking group because you can meet so many cool people that just need your product or service. The work is out there. Denver did a study. This is about four years ago. 65% of businesses in Michigan don't have any web presence at all, period. 65% of all businesses in, um, in Michigan don't have any web presence at all. Not a Facebook page, not a Google page, not anything. 
And these are, these are small mom and pops. These are people that are working out of their homes that need to be online because we live in a world that if you don't live online, you don't exist. And I firmly believe that open source and um, democratizing publishing is a right to be able to have people share their voice. And you have the power to change and allow people to have their voice, but you have to make it accessible for people. And you can get paid in the process. So please don't take any of this talk and think that I'm saying, oh, you're not worth the money and you know WordPress should be cheap. I am not saying that at all. Charge what you're worth, but only if you're busy. If you're not busy, you need to change something. And you know, then when you start getting client referrals, you can start batching it up. And a lot of times these clients, once they're successful after one or two years and they have some money, they'll remember that you were helpful. They'll remember, and maybe when they need a full project, like a custom project, you're gonna be that person that's been there every step of the way to charge them those additional things. And you can still do the low end websites if you want, hire somebody. Hire someone for 10, 15 bucks an hour, for 10 bucks an hour, have them make websites in a few hours. They can learn WordPress in the process. You're still making good money. Um, and that's where I think the biggest Achilles heel with these freelancers are, is they just, they just care too much about their ego, quite frankly. And they'll, they'll defer making money until they get a project that makes them validate their self-worth. But at the end of the day, you need to make money to pay your bills, otherwise you need to be doing something else. So that is kind of the end of this talk. Um, I do have about 10 minutes for questions because we, we have a 15 minute uh, uh, transfer period between the talks because I believe 45 minutes. So does anyone have any questions, comments, death threats, anything? There you go, perfect. <laughs> and, and, and by the way, just keep doing a lot of talks, take a bunch of 20s, and never give it back. You're fine. Yeah. So, do you spend money on content creation? Um, I used to. <laughs> there was a service that I used the API on um, called I Need Articles that would write content for me through an API, and I would double that fee. So they charged $1 for 400 words. I would charge two dollars for 400 words, and I, I had it automated in a process. That worked out okay in the beginning, but um, then what I ended up doing is I found a copywriter I really trusted, and I would just refer people to them if they didn't have content on their own, and then he would give me website leads, and we just kind of dealt with it that way instead of trying to. I used to have put it in the project bids, but it was really hard. You know, it was just easier to say if you don't have your, if you're not going to get your content ready to me, just. Go talk, to the, go talk to Bob, I recommend him, and he would just do the same for me. Um, but I did try to automate it for the really, really low-end stuff for a while with one of those um, copywriting services. And it was fine, but it, you know, it just, it, it's so hit or miss because you don't know what you're gonna get until you get it back. So if the client, you know, you can say all day long that you, you pay for it and you get what you get, but at the end of the day, the client still needs to be happy with the content. Although, funny story is I used corporate Ipsum as my go-to default lorem Ipsum. I can't tell you how many banks and credit unions thanked me for writing their copy for them. I can't, in hospitals, oh, you wrote the copy, it's amazing. I didn't even know you would do that. I, I didn't, it's, it's just placeholder text. Did you read it? <laughs> um, so if you were looking for a really good Ipsum, corporate Ipsum I found works the best for companies, so. Yeah. <laughs> I used to use Back to the Future Ipsum and then that also didn't work. But corporate Ipsum sounds real enough, especially for like banks and stuff, that people think it's like kind of legitimate. Any other questions or comments? No? Okay. Um, I know this ended a little bit early. Again, I always, uh, whenever I do a talk for the first time, I try to keep it a little short in case, you know, however it goes. Thank you so much um, for your time. If you need to reach me, these are my uh, handles and everything, and I do got cards up here for both Bold Grid and Web Ventures. If someone wants to grab one, you can always reach me um, later, and I'll be around for the rest, rest of the day. And then at 3.30 in this room, um, there'll be a panel about page builders, which will also be on, along with some other people. So, thank you.